Hey friends, on this episode of the Michigan's Best Podcast, we are once again joined by co-CEO of Big B Coffee, Bob Fish, and we talk more about Black Lives Matter. And then we talk about what happens in the after, right? We are, we are moving out of being in our homes. Things are opening up or completely opened up, but we've learned a lot of stuff in the last 100 days. How do we hang on to some of those lessons and use them going forward? I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Michigan's Best Podcast. Bob, how are you, my friend? Fantastic. Great to I see am, you. I, it is great to be seen. I'm 72 hours away from a haircut, so that is... Uh, <laughs> Very exciting for me. It'll be, by the time I get to Wednesday, it'll be 100 days, which is, uh, I can't remember the last time I, I had hair this long. But yeah, it was probably like in college or something crazy. It like probably that. actually was in college, uh, <laughs> to tell you the truth, for sure. So we were, we were talking last week uh, about Black Lives Matter, and yep. obviously it is still very much top of mind and should be. Uh, and, and I'm wondering, you know, over the course of the weekend, we had an incident in Atlanta, um, which another tragic yeah. moment and we're trying to all comprehend this and, and figure out what's going on. I'm wondering, you know, where your head's at after last week. Yeah. Well, I guess I was fortunate enough uh, to actually partic participate in a, a Black Lives Matter march here in, in my little local town, which is pretty small here in Saugatuck, Douglas, but uh, you know, pretty active town kind of thing. And, you know, it all started off with uh, meeting at a, park and you know somebody was talking about you know what you can do and so on and so forth but you know the basic message of what you can do is um of course you can speak up speak out kind of thing but if all you're gonna do is carry a sign and wear a t-shirt uh and and you're not engaging with it more dramatically than that then you might as well sort of burn your t-shirt and burn your sign because right. you're not doing much good you know yeah it's, it's sort of more about you than 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 everybody else but I'll tell you one thing, uh, we marched across the bridge, we have a bridge here between Saugatuck and Douglas, and I was just stunned at the number of cars beeping and honking. You know, I'd put it at the 85, 90% were going by supporting uh, everybody that was in the march and so on and so forth. And those that weren't supporting, weren't doing anything bad, uh, they just weren't looking anybody in the eyeball kind of sure. thing. Sure, <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it felt good to get out there and do a little something. I don't think that that's very meaningful. Maybe it's more meaningful for, for me to say, uh, this is where I stand kind of thing. Uh, but it's not real action oriented yet. And both, you know, I have conversations with both my wife and my, my business partner, uh, Mike McFall, and we're trying to figure out, you know, what's the real action that needs to come out of this if we want it to be meaningful. Yeah, and I, I think th I think we're all in that that space, right? And I, I spent the weekend uh, rereading a letter from a Birmingham jail because I just feel like Dr. King's that moment in Dr. King's life is resounding right now, and we're kind oh, of in this place where we're trying to figure out what is the is the next step, you know? Um, and when you you look at uh, psychological models, right? We're in the awareness, acceptance, and now we're trying to move towards whatever the action is uh, right. as we figure that out as a, as a country. And so I think that's very astute for you to be like, I, I, walking and protesting is certainly part of it, but what what is the long-term action item that we're gonna do with this, you know? That's right. And you know, Bigby uh, touts that we exist to love people. That's sort of why we've been put on this earth and why we operate the business, solving problems of people on the planet kind of thing. And so we just don't want those to be empty words. Yeah. You know, we exist to love people. And, you know, we don't want to get caught in that trap either of existing to love all people. You know what I mean? And of course, it's all people, but we don't want to diminish the importance of this particular conversation. And so uh, still brainstorming on exactly what to do. That's awesome. I love that you guys are doing that and, and you're so engaged in this. So I want to shift gears a little bit because, you know, as, as we started this a couple minutes ago, Michigan as a whole is, is opening up and I don't know what are, we're in phase three or four or phase yeah. 3.5 or we're in the prequel. I don't really know which movie we're in, but we're in one of these phases. Um, and as, you know, as a consumer who's running around kind of getting back into stores I haven't been into, you know, you're seeing people that are wearing masks and aren't wearing masks. And I, I wonder, because I've talked to a number of retailers and a number of people who own businesses, and it's this difficult dance between what you need them to do and the, as you were talking, I think a couple episodes, of the, the rights of the individual, right? Yeah. Uh, and I wonder, you know, as, as somebody who is running a business, 
what is this like for you to kind of manage the, this, this mask and the, you know, and what I've seen is, which I can't call anything other than mask shaming, even though I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really sure how my mask hurts you, but whatever. Um, yeah. You know, as a business owner, how do you guys manage something like that? Well, and, you know, frankly, we've been managing it uh, since the COVID crisis arrived because, you know, Big D Coffee was an essential business. And so, you know, we, we had to, 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 to really get educated pretty quickly on, on mask usage and maybe even shields and, you know, all, all kinds of social distancing stuff to continue to operate the business through the, through the crisis. And so, you know, we've been getting all of our information from the CDC and the health department and so on and so forth. And, and these are really qualified individuals. So, you know, for us, we know exactly what needs to be done, which is, you know what, you got to wear a mask <laughs> um, to be safe. And, um, you know, right now, uh, as we are getting liberated, so to speak, uh, from, from the sort of stay at home order, um, some, some folks I, I think might be taking it too far and, and feel like they're, they're getting out of jail and not out of boot camp. I think we've used that reference before. Sure. And they're just a, a little liberal with it. And, and I, I think people just don't understand exactly how all this works. You know, the, the COVID virus doesn't, you know, like fly around through the air and, you know, uh, try to get in your mask and, and get in your mouth, that kind of thing. It needs a carrier. And the carrier is the, the sort of aerosolization of your, the, you know, the liquid in your mouth. So when you talk or speak or shout or, or cough or sneeze or whatever, it blows it out in the air. Well, you know, wearing a mask basically reduces the velocity of that out to other people. And, and so it just makes it a little more safe, right? So uh, one of the, the facts uh, that have been discovered is dosing makes a difference. So how much of the COVID virus sort of lands uh, in you can make a difference as to whether you get infected or not. That's why, you know, sneezing is really bad because it's basically a high dose being propelled. Right. Okay, so what the mask wearing by both individuals does, it just sort of reduces the uh, probability that, that you, would, you would get a little aerosolized uh, version of COVID, and it, it certainly reduces the dose. And, you know, this thing isn't going away. We don't have a vaccine, and we don't have a cure. And so the best, smartest thing we can do, particularly if you've got old folks at home or you know, people that are uh, compromised anyway from a health perspective, geez, you just want to keep yourself as safe as possible. Now, we would ask for Big D Coffee that the consumer stay as safe as possible and not infect, uh, you know, one of the staff members and so on. Just basically show a little respect. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's interesting. You're seeing um, McDonald's was a franchise on the uh, east side of the state, had an outbreak in the restaurant, and then it becomes this thing where they've got to figure out, totally. you know, how to isolate the employees. And, and you know, it's something that I, 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 to me, when I read that from McDonald's, I thought what a nightmare scenario to have to figure out when you've got a single restaurant and then what that does for the branding of the, of the rest of the brand, right? Totally. And, and you know, we've had that happen inside Big B. It, it, it's not improbable, right? I mean, we have sure. 3,000 employees working out there. Uh, statistically, it's just going to happen. And, and, you know, we got all the procedures in place. The store shuts down. It gets professionally cleaned and sanitized. Those workers have to be isolated and quarantined for a while and so on and so forth. And we've been through many cycles of that. Most people don't really know it because uh, we're just like all over it yeah. uh, and, 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 and so on. But, yeah, um, you know, we have an obligation to each other. You know, you can't walk into a grocery store and decide to pee in the middle of the aisle. Okay. You just can't do that. <laughs> See, and so some folks are like, well, you know, you're, you're impinging on my freedom wearing a mask. Well, we impinge on people's freedoms for the social good of all uh, on a regular basis. Uh, this is a real virus. It's, it's a real serious threat to a lot of people's health. Let's take it seriously for a while until there is a vaccine or a cure. Yeah, or at least we figure out what the what the extent of it. Because to me, it feels like every day I tune into the news, it's yeah. it's changed, right? If we, and I don't remember if you and I talked about this, but if we go back to March, we were supposed to keep our groceries out in the driveway for three days and not touch cardboard right. boxes. And it turns out that that's not really how it works, and so we we adapt. And so I, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist or a virologist, so I I right. defer to experts on whether or not I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. 
Totally. And boy, we got somebody inside uh, Big D. Her name is Caitlin Tierney, and she studies this stuff up and down and, and is, is coaching all of our owner operators and their baristas and so on through all of this. So, you know, the thing we preach on all our town hall meetings with our owner operators is safety is key and safety will be part of the brand. You can't ignore it right at this point in time. And so an abundance of caution is really the best approach. And what's interesting about that statement is that is that I think we've all as consumers, right? Not as not necessarily as business owners, but as consumers, I think we all took that safety for granted that we assumed when we walked into a restaurant, we would be safe, which is why you have that adverse reaction when something goes wrong, right? When there's a, a health violation in your favorite restaurant or whatever is because yeah. the assumption is trust. The assumption is safety. And, and here we are now trying to figure out what that next level of safety is. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about this week is uh, I, I ordered this from you and your team. It's, it's going to be inverted on the camera because I'm the camera I'm using, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's the moonshot guidebook that you guys put together. And, and I share that not as a plug, but I share that because we've learned a lot in the last, call it 90 days, right? Because we're probably 10 days out of, of being out of quarantine. And we've learned a lot. And, and I'm wondering if you have some insight on how people can remember and recall and take those lessons and turn them into a discipline as opposed to kind of reverting back to where we were in February. Because I, I feel like I've come out of this with some habits I'd like to, I'd like to keep. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you've got some sage like advice on, on how you work that into your life. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love that you got the moonshot uh, guidebook, right? It's a workbook that basically covers one of the four tenants uh, to, to our purpose, which is to support people in building a life they love. Right. So, so what that workbook workbook does in particular is helps an individual discover who they want to be. And I just think this is really a good, good time to discover who you want to be, right? Because there have been so many external pressures on us to challenge who it is we want to be in the world. And this doesn't mean, you know, what kind of job you want. It could, but it doesn't have to mean that. Uh, it's literally how you want to be. And uh, it's, you know, going through the Moonshot Guidebook for me, and I've done it now, I believe it's the sixth year in a row, it, it's been an evolution and a learning experience about who I want to be in this world. It's really influenced uh, a lot of my behavior as a business owner that otherwise I probably would have kept under wraps a little bit, you know? So, you know, some people are like, ah, you should be careful about talking about Black Lives Matter. You know, that's just a little too political or it's too sociological or, or whatever. But if I believe what I believe, I, I got to come out and, and, and say it or, or what I believe has no particular meaning. And we cover the other tenants too. You've got the Moonshot Guidebook, which does the uh, uh, who you want to be. We also uh, cover something called uh, physical and emotional vitality. Uh, and I'm really into that. You know, I like walking in the woods yeah, and, for sure. and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, there's a book I would recommend, The Joy of Movement, that, that really covers how that can have a big impact in your life. And then uh, whether you have a sense of belonging or not, you know, basically, who's your tribe? Do you feel comfortable with them? Do you belong to several different tribes? And can you be the same person in all of those tribes and so on? But Big B has created something called Life Labs, which uh, runs programs in, in all four of the tenants. And the last tenant is the ability to exceed your basic needs, but in all four tenants. And we are having just such great success. Now, this Life Labs is something that we were going to launch uh, in about two or three years. But because of COVID, we advanced it and it's launched now. And uh, I, I think that at this moment where we've had to stay at home, and again, it had these challenges. It's just such a great time to examine uh, your life uh, and the impact you want your life uh, to have uh, on the world, right? And so, you know, we, we, the, the one thing about human life is it's finite, right? Sure, and when, yeah. And when you're done living your life, uh, if you were to write your obituary or look at your tombstone, not to be morbid, what would you want it to say about you? right? That's really what we're after here. Yep. And then once you figure that out, just, just live in that life, you know? So for me, I want to, I, I want to impact uh, a million people in a positive and multi-generational way. I want to lift up 
a million people. That's my goal. And that, that seems like a ridiculously high number in one way. And then I look at it and I think it's just a ridiculously low number. You know, I mean, sure. I look at people like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi influenced a billion people and, you know, current topic, Martin Luther King uh, affected a whole nation, Nelson Mandela, a whole nation. You know? Maybe even with Mandela, probably even the globe, right? Because that was global totally. pressure to kind of push that over the, you know. Totally. Yeah. And just think about it. The United States put a lot of pressure on South Africa to make those changes. And look at where we are now. We're like revisiting it again a little bit. And it's, it's a different version, but it's sort of the same topic again, right? And, you know, societally, we probably just need to kind of get on a little bit. But if you know you, who you want to be, it's a lot easier to get on it. Yeah, and I, I think the what I found, and I'm obviously only a couple pages into it because it's sort of it's an exercise, right? Yeah. Um, but the the ability to reflect and then the I won't say pressure, that's the wrong word, the encouragement to share it. Because yeah. if you just keep it to yourself, then again, to your point, no one knows. Um, mm -hmm. but the ability to write stuff down and go, here, read this, because this is yeah. the thing that we're gonna we're we're all y'all in this house, we're about to do a thing. Here it is, that's right? right? Well, we use some very specific language in Big B Coffee, and that is that we support you in building a life uh, that you love. And the only way we can support you is if you articulate it verbally, right? Sure. I mean, we just, we can't know what you're after unless you say it out loud. And then the minute you say it out loud, we can definitely support you in, in that attainment, right? So, so speaking it out loud is a really important part of the discovery process and what you'll find is whether it's family members or friends or co-workers once they understand where you're going and what you want everybody's there to support you it's really amazing absolutely all right my friend as always this has been a joy have a wonderful week and uh, we will talk to you next week all right we're gonna high five you boom